Well, good morning. morning. You're all very welcome. And of course, this is a very special day, especially for our children and young people, because this is the first time in a while we've been able to have a proper children's day, uh, because a previous few, I think, have been done virtually uh, because of the restrictions at that time. But it's lovely to have the boys and girls in with us today in church. And I know that their teachers have been working very hard in preparing them for this special day. So there's a lovely program lined up. So we look forward to what the boys and girls are going to share with us today in this service. But before we we worship together, just want to highlight uh, a few announcements. First of all, a sincere thank you to everyone who attended the treasure hunt and barbecue in Drama Coast yesterday evening. Your support was greatly appreciated. Unfortunately, the weather wasn't exactly what we hoped for, but we soon dried out whenever we got back to the hall and tucked into our burgers. But we want to express our gratitude to the men's group who organized this event. And it certainly was lovely to see folks from Derrimore and Drumacos in the hall afterwards. Here in Derrimore, we have a team of people who pray weekly for the needs of the congregation and the local community. And if you would like them to pray for you, please place a written request for prayer in the box in the vestibule. That's all by way of announcement. We have, of course, come to worship God, and we're going to begin our service today by standing to sing Praise is Rising. Laura, now to come and lead us in prayer.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, let us consider the words of Psalm 145. I will exalt your name forever and ever. Father God, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the most powerful, everlasting, awesome God. How we adore you. We marvel at the depth of your love, that you gave us the gift of Jesus, so that we may be saved and be with you forever. God of life, whose love enfolds us and spirit fills us, we praise your holy name. God of joy, whose sunrise wakes us and sunsets amazes us, we praise your holy name. God of hope, whose promise sustains us and power upholds us, we praise your holy name. God of love, whose patience humbles us and touch can heal us, we praise your holy name. And God of peace, who breaks down barriers and walls that divide us, we praise your holy name. We confess, Father, that we have not loved you with all our hearts and all our minds and all our strength. And often, Father, we take the path that is easiest to walk. O oh God, we have not listened to you and broken your commandments, and we have disobeyed your word. We confess, Father, that we have sinned against you. In your mercy, we take refuge in the shadow of your wings. O oh Lord, help us to put aside the uncertainties of this world and rest upon the certainties of the kingdom, for your promises are not changeable, but immovable and eternal. O oh God, guide us by your Holy Spirit that we may serve your will, obey your word, and show your love this day and every day and forevermore. Amen. In a moment, the Sunday School Choir are going to come and, and sing for us. And I just thought it would be worth mentioning, sometimes when, well, not news, well sometimes children, but Folk take part in church and sometimes we want to applaud and we're not sure whether we should or not. But I think it's very appropriate because the kids have put a lot of work into that uh, and what they're doing today. And I think it would be appropriate at any point in the service if you feel you want to applaud and encourage them, please do that. And as we do that, we honor God as well. So we're going to invite Sunday School Choir to come and sing the first of two pieces they're singing today. He's got everything under control and old man Noah.
wasn't that great. And there's going to be more from the Sunday School Choir later. It's not over yet. Uh, more singing from them to come later in the service. But we're all going to stand now and sing Amazing Grace. The boys and girls of the Sunday School are now go, going to come and present a drama for us. Obedience to God. God was very sad. No one obeyed him anymore. The world that he had created was filled with wickedness. Everyone seemed to hate each other. There was no goodness left anywhere in the world, so God decided to wipe the earth clean and start again as no one loved him at all. No one, that is, but Noah. Noah trusted God. He wanted to please God, and so he lived a life of obedience. God decided to give Noah a chance. If Noah obeyed his instructions, he and his family would be saved. Noah, my friend, I would like to speak with you. Yes, Lord, I am listening. The world which I created has turned away from me. The people are obsessed with wickedness. It fills me with sadness, but I have decided to start again. What does this mean, Lord? I will send a great flood which will cover the earth. Everything that breathes will die. Only you have loved me, Noah, and you will be saved. You and your family will not perish, but you must obey my commands. I am listening, Lord. What do I have to do? You must build a great boat. I will give you the exact instructions. And what will I put in this great boat, Lord? I have decided to save some of all the animals of the earth. You must prepare a place for them and gather them together when all is ready. Yes, Lord, I will get my three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, to help me. So God gave Noah the exact instructions, and Noah began immediately. 
What are you going to do with that huge pile of wood, Father? Oh, Shem, you have to help me. We have to build a huge boat, and quickly. What on earth do you want a huge boat for? We're miles away from the sea. How would you get it to water? Never mind about that. It's God's command. There will be a huge flood soon, and we are the only ones to be saved from it, but only if we obey his instructions. Well, why didn't you tell me it was God's command? Of course we must build this boat. Let's get at it. What are you two doing? Oh, Ham, it's you. We are building a huge boat. A huge boat? Don't be so silly. What on earth do you want a huge boat for? That's the silliest idea I've ever heard of. No, Ham. God is sending a massive flood. The whole earth will be covered with water for many days, and we are the only ones to be saved. Why didn't you tell me that God had told you to do this in the first place? Of course I will help. What's that you three are doing? Oh, Japheth, it's you. You must help us. We are building a huge boat. Huge boat? What do you need a huge boat? What a ridiculous idea. The neighbours will think that we've gone crazy. We'll be the laughing stock of the whole town. No, Japheth. Please listen to me. God is sending a massive flood. The whole earth is to be covered with water for many days, and we are the only ones to be saved. God has told you to do this. Well, why didn't you tell me in the first place? Of course I will help. Let me add it. Noah's wife arrived, looking very annoyed. What on earth have you men been up to? You've been out here for ages. The dinner was ready an hour ago and now it's burnt to a crisp. You jolly well better have a good explanation for this. We've been building a huge boat. What? That's ridiculous. We're nowhere near the sea. There is to be a huge flood. Eh? Have you taken leave of your senses? We are putting animals in the boat. What? Animals? That's ridiculous. God has told us to do everything according to his plan. God told you to build a boat. Why didn't you say so? If it's God's work, get on with it. I'll give you a hand. So the huge boat grew bigger and bigger. Soon it could be seen from miles around. Neighbours began to gather at Noah's house. They started pointing and laughing. Have you seen what that stupid man Noah is doing? It looks like a huge boat. What is he doing that for? Who knows? He's an idiot anyway. Do you know he still believes in God? I don't believe that. That one out with the dinosaurs. What are you building, Noah? I'm building a huge boat. A huge boat? What are you doing that for? There's no water around for miles and miles and miles. Because God told me to. God told you to. Do you still believe in God? So why don't you give us... There is no God, you stupid man. Listen, my father is right. We are obeying God's command. There is to be a huge flood. God says the flood will cover the entire earth. Everything will die. So that's why he told us to build a boat. Listen, everyone. Noah's gone stark raving mad. He's building a huge boat in the middle of dry land. Yeah, and he said God told him to do it. Noah, you are a real loser and your three sons are freaks. Why don't you give up believing in God? Yeah, we will, Lord, now, not God. Listen, Noah, and the rest of your God squad. Get it into your thick heads. There is no God. There will be no flood. The people laughed at Noah and his sons. They called him names and said things about him that are much too nasty to repeat here. But Noah and his family ignored them. They continued to obey God's word. They finished the ark. Of course the flood did come, and the wicked people of earth realised too late that Noah had been right all along. They all died in the flood. Only Noah and his family and the animals he'd put on the ark survived. Noah and his family were saved because they obeyed God, even when everyone else was against them. Sometimes people laugh at us for following God or refusing to do something that we know is not following God's ways.
Has anyone got any food on them? I'm really hungry. I'm starving. What will we eat? Come on, let's steal a bar of chocolate. No one will ever know. It'll be so easy. The stick of that pamper. No, we shouldn't do it. It's wrong. God will know. God? There is no such thing as God. You're just a chick. You're a chicken. Yeah, you're a chicken. to remember that, like Noah, we have to stand up for God in a world where God is often forgotten. Let's be like Noah, strong for God. Dear Lord, let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to be like Noah and obey you, no matter what the cost. We remember about Jesus, who remained obedient, even when it meant death on a cross. We need your help to make us strong and stand up for you in a world where people may call us names and be nasty to us for obeying you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, over the last few months, a lot of us have been enjoying BGT, but I, I don't think it compares with DGT. Darimore's definitely got talent. So well done, boys and girls and young folk. That was a real treat. So it was, as you retold, the story of Noah for us. And uh, we're going to get the boys and girls to come back now and sing a couple more songs. It's an adventure, and Jesus is a friend of mine. i 
I'm going to invite Heather now to come and lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, our maker, we thank you today for your goodness to us. Lord, as we reflect on our church family here in Derrimore, we realize we are so blessed to have so many amazing children. Lord, it is our prayer that each of them would know you and know that their value is in you and realize that the brilliant talents that they have are a gift from you. Help them to grow up strong in you, Lord, holding on to the truth that they are children of the King and knowing that you have a plan and a purpose for each of them. We give thanks for the parents and grandparents who bring them to church and who nurture the seeds of faith that are planted here. Father, we thank you for your abundant mercy and grace which you share on us in so many ways. We are so privileged to be able to meet up and worship you in complete freedom where many in the world risk so much to come to church. We thank you for our safe homes to live in and food to eat with so many choices yet we know that there are those who are homeless or hungry. We give thanks for the schools our children attend and for the Christian ethos that's taught there. And we pray that as the summer holidays approach, the children would have a safe, fun and happy time and teachers would enjoy a well-earned rest. Lord, we thank you for our health and strength and we praise you that we have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Yet we think of those today who are battling illness, attending appointments, or waiting for results. Bless them, Lord. Place your healing hand upon them and lift them and all who love them from all anxiety and to the peace that only you can provide. Bless those who are caring for family. Sustain and strengthen them, Lord, giving them the stamina they need to fulfill their role. We thank you for all who work in our health service and voluntary sector and for the advances in medicine and technology that you, Lord, have made possible. We also pray for those who are grieving the loss of someone they loved. How comforting it is to know that you know exactly what we go through and that we don't need to be scared about tomorrow because you are already there. God, we give you thanks for Reverend David and for bringing him to us. We pray that you would bless him and his family as he works to bring us closer to you. And most of all, God, we thank you for Jesus, our Redeemer and Saviour, our very best friend who sticks closer than a brother. And in his precious name, we pray all these things. Amen. Well, over the past couple of months, we've been looking at some of the famous people we read of in the Old Testament. And today, the children have retold one of the best known stories that we find in the Bible, the story of Noah and the ark. And there are numerous accounts of a worldwide flood in ancient times. But in the biblical account that's been preserved for us, we don't just have a historical record of the event. We're actually told the names of those involved, and we're given an explanation as to why this great flood took place. So let's think about the lessons we can learn from this global event that Noah and his family got caught up in. Have you ever noticed when winter coats go on sale every year, they don't go on sale in January when it's cold, they don't go on sale in December or even November. The shops put winter coats up for sale in August. When it's still pretty hot outside, well, some of the time it might be hot outside in August. No one needs a winter coat in August, of course, unless you're going to the southern hemisphere, which is the, the bottom part of our planet. In August, most people are wearing shorts and sandals, at least whenever the sun chooses to make an appearance. So why would shops put heavy winter coats, scarves, hats, and gloves on sale during the summer? 
Because, I don't know about you, but I would feel a bit strange walking down Port Stewart Prom in the middle of August like this. Although maybe if the wind kicks up, I might appreciate that. So why? Why did they sell winter clothes at the end of the summer? Well, for one simple reason. Shop owners know that winter's coming. It may be summer, but winter is on the way. Now, you generally can't tell by the weather outside, but experience tells us that a few months after summer ends, winter arrives, and you need that coat, the scarf, and the gloves, and the hat. Now, Noah didn't have a weather forecast or past experience to tell him to build the ark. There had never been a massive downpour of rain that led to a flood before. But Noah had enough faith to believe God when he spoke to him. God said to him, a flood is coming. And Noah believed him. So Noah and his sons built the ark. And they did it in spite of criticism, jeers and laughter from their neighbours. When the ark was built, God sent the animals two by two. And then he sent the flood. Now, God may never ask you or I to prepare for something that's never happened before. He may not want you to do something as big as building an ark. But whatever God tells you to do, do it. Be like Noah. Don't pay attention to others who try to put you off. But like Noah, choose to do what God is asking you to do. And choose to serve him with all your heart. You know, God can do great things through us. In the same way, he did great things through Noah. We just need to trust him. There's a verse in the Bible that will help us do that. We find it in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. And there it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Maybe we could all say that together. After three, one, two, three. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Boys and girls, that really just means that we trust in God and he will guide us through life. When you were a baby, your mom and dad probably went to great lengths to create a nice nursery room for you. Baby nurseries are usually filled with soft pastel colours and cute, cuddly things like teddy bears, as well as, as other things like soft baby blocks and rainbows. One of the most popular themes for baby nurseries is Noah's Ark. Who doesn't love the image of a little boat filled with animals and a rainbow on top? It's so cute, isn't it? But actually, the real story of Noah's Ark isn't really as cute and cuddly as that. Before the rainbow appeared in the sky, there was a real flood where people really died. And the animals on the ark wouldn't have been very happy. The ark would have been really noisy, really uncomfortable, and really smelly. Noah lived in a dark time, a time when people had turned away from God. People were worshiping false gods and doing their own thing. And all this made God very sad. So he decided to hit the reset button. He made a plan to clean up the earth and he chose Noah to help him. We pick up the story in Genesis 6, verse 9. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, who we met earlier. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how, saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof an opening one cubit high all round. Put a door in the side of the ark 
and make lower, middle and upper decks. I am going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, every creature that has breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. The chances are you've heard the story of Noah's Ark before today. Even as small children were taught about Noah and the flood. But let me try and take you back and put you in Noah's shoes. In Noah's time, it hadn't yet rained here on earth in the way that it rains now. And of course, we know all about that here in Northern Ireland. In those days, no one tuned into the news bulletins to see if they, needed, they would need an umbrella the next day. For one thing, there was no TV and there was no such thing as an umbrella because up until that point, there hadn't really been any rain. So God just wasn't promising this new, never-before-seen thing called rain. He was promising a lot of rain. He was, he was saying there's going to be a flood and the whole earth would be covered with water and all life on earth would end, except for the few people and animals on the ark. No one had ever seen a flood, so no one could imagine what such a thing would be like, or even that it would happen. Yet Noah did not hesitate when God told him to build an ark. So Noah went to work. He recruited his sons, and they started chopping wood. For more than a century, we're told, that's a hundred years Noah and his sons worked on the ark. By the way, people lived a lot longer back in those days. We can only imagine the kind of teasing and joking Noah's neighbors must have done as they watched this man and his family build this giant boat in the middle of nowhere. But as, as you and I know, God wasn't joking about the rain and the flood. The bad weather came and Noah's family were ready. It took a great deal of faith on the part of Noah to build the ark. But because he had faith, because he believed in God, he ignored all the laughter and mocking of his neighbors and he finished what he started. It's not always easy to do the right thing. We live in a world that's a lot like Noah's world, where people believe they have the right to do as they please. Sadly, a lot of people no longer believe in God. And if we tell them that we want to obey God, they may laugh at us. There's only one way to counter such criticism in this world, and that is by having faith. Faith is believing in things that we cannot see with our eyes. We can't see oxygen, but when we breathe it in, it keeps us alive, so we know it's there, and it's always been there from the moment we were born. Noah had faith in God because he had a relationship with God. They were friends. He had never seen God's face but he knew God by hearing his voice and through looking at the beauty of creation all around him. The mountains, the rivers, the trees, the stars and the night sky. Noah knew God well enough to trust him when God said there would be a flood. For Noah, it was the same as breathing in oxygen. God had always been there for him and he knew that God wouldn't let him down. God has given us stories like Noah and the ark so that we will have the same faith as he had. When we accept Jesus into our hearts, we receive God's Holy Spirit who will be with us right through this life and into the next. We can talk directly to God as we pray. We can feel his presence. And the more we listen to him, the more we'll see him at work in our lives. And the more we'll see him work, the greater our faith will be. And the greater our faith the greater things God will do through our lives. Noah was a man of faith. He ignored the mockery and laughter of others and he did what God asked. Now, God may not ask you or I to do something as grand as building a big boat such as the ark, but I hope that the story of Noah will, will inspire all of us 
to put our trust in God. So much so that when he asks you or I to do something, we'll have the faith to believe him and obey him. God didn't let Noah down, and he won't let us down either. So, can anyone tell me what's special about today? Yes, it's Children's Day, very special. Sunday, very special. But there's something very special about this particular Sunday. What is it? Father's Day, isn't that right? It's Father's Day. So in closing, I want to share a few things from Noah's story that will help us dads here today. Noah was a good father. It wasn't any easier in his day to raise a good family. It was a day when, like today, there were many things going on, and it was a time when even good men would give in to temptation. In the midst of everything, Noah made a commitment to raise his family to be strong, loyal, and godly. He wanted to lead his wife and children into a close relationship with God. And the Lord honored Noah's commitment and every one of his family were saved. How did Noah become a strong man at a time when there were so many weak men in society? Well, in Genesis 6 verse 8 it says, He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. While others went after possessions, social positions and popularity with evildoers, Noah went into the presence of God. To the other people, Having a good life meant being rich, or to some, having loads of friends brought them satisfaction. To Noah, the good life was living in the presence of God. And that's where he felt life was at its best. Second, Noah listened to what God was saying to him. And he didn't just pray and then go off and do his own thing. Hebrews 11 verse 7 tells us that Noah paid attention when God warned him about the days he was living in. Third and finally, Noah looked after his family. He made changes in his family life and he built an ark to save his family. He changed his work schedule and how he related to his three children. Why? Well, he wanted everyone in his family to be saved. It meant that much to him. Noah stood tall in a land where men were weak and spineless and he took a stand, not caring what his friends thought about his commitment to serve God. You see, he was man enough to not sit back and idly watch his three children go the way of the way of the world. He was a real father to his children. He was the kind of man that his children could look up to. He was humble, caring, and yet bold and strong. Noah didn't win any prizes for his preaching, but he won his family by his obedience to God. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and so can we, and so can our families. If we strive to live for God, being good role models who lead by example. Let's join together in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the story of Noah that we've been thinking about today, and for the lessons we learned from his life. May his faith inspire us to obey you also, just as he did, so that we, like him and his family, we may experience the salvation you desire for each one of us. For it's in the name of your Son and our Saviour we pray. Amen. So the boys boys and girls of the Sunday School and their teachers are going to come along and sing one more time for us uh, a piece entitled Every Blade of Grass.
So uh, on your behalf, I want to say a big thank you to Joy and our faithful band of teachers, all the boys and girls and the young people who have led us in worship so beautifully today. And it would be appropriate, I think, if we showed that uh, through applause, but also just to say thank you um, to the teachers for their commitment to our children throughout the year. Uh, and also to you as parents and as grandparents. Um, I know that you encourage your children so much through bringing them along uh, and also for, through your prayers as well. And it's just been lovely to share this time together. So let's show our appreciation for our Sunday school teachers. For all the Thank you. I also just want to say as well, it's lovely to have the church filled. There's a lovely atmosphere in the building today. And it's been, since my time coming here, which is six months now over the months they've gradually seen more and more people come back to church and they see the children coming along and families and it's just lovely so i would encourage you to keep coming keep coming along and enjoying the fellowship that is so good within dara moore uh, but it's been a real blessing for me today just to be part of this service and i know that the boys and girls are looking very looking forward very much to what's coming next what do you think is coming next boys and girls you're going to get something are you would there be Sunday school prizes maybe? Yeah, some of them not sure, but this is maybe the first time for a few of them. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. Up at the front, Joy, are you going to help me, are you? <laughs> so yes, the, the boys and girls of our Sunday school are now going to receive their Sunday school prizes. So um, there's no particular order here. It's going to be a random uh, thing. So uh, just when I read out your name, if you come up to the front. Something to do with attendance issues because of COVID. Yes, because of COVID, Joy says there's no um, prize related to attendance. That makes sense. Okay. So first of all, Sky Summers, do you want to come up for your prize? Next is Adam Thompson.
Kayla Harland. Emily Baird. Bobby Baird. Micah Adair. Heidi Allen. Robin Stewart. That's okay. Tom Grant. And Willow Summers. Alexandra Adair. And this is for Carter Allen. And Oscar Stewart. Hannah Caldwell. Uh, Nell Durant. Molly Austin. Uh, Amelia Guy. Matthew Laird. Emma Wallace. Lucy Conley. Kelsey Allen. Okay. And finally, James Laird. So Joy says that if she has made a mistake, she apologizes. Please come and see her afterwards and sort you out. <laughs> Thank you. Well done, everybody. Well, it's been a lovely time together. So thank you for coming along and thank you for your support for Sunday School uh, right through the year. We're going to bring our service to a close now as we stand to sing, Hear the Call of the Kingdom.
we close with the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us this day and remain with us always. Amen.